G'day guys, welcome back to Living with BC. I'm Ben. Today we've got another book review for you. We've got God is Good for You by Greg Sheridan. Let's have a chat. God is Good For You by Greg Sheridan. Um, I talked about this a little while ago when I did a book haul. And he is an investigative journalist. I think he did mostly foreign affairs. So he would have covered like military topics and stuff like that. Um, pretty much like a defense of Christianity in an increasingly non-religious world. He starts off the first half of the book talking about, um, I guess, kind of like, not, not a whole history of Christianity because that, that would take way too long and it's not that thick of a book but just I guess like the world has become progressively nicer or, or less dangerous as we've gone along throughout history um, obviously you could argue that in certain parts of the world but predominantly uh, the world is a safer place however it is especially safer wherever Christianity has you know grown and blossomed uh, particularly for women. That said, I mean, there's obviously some failings within Christianity, particularly to do with the Catholic Church. No one's, you know, saying Christianity doesn't have issues. But where it has been preached in the world, there's, there's usually been a vast amount of good as well. So the book spends the first half uh, more or less talking about that, talking about historically um, where Christianity thrived and certain changes that were made throughout the world. It is written by an Australian journalist, so it is also predominantly... Um, Australian, how it's influenced Australian life, particularly. And the author poses the question, I guess, like if Christianity were to to fully disperse and, and um, stop being, what would that look like in the world? And I like those questions, like what would happen if, you know, if we pick option A instead of option B? I used to love those stories where you'd, you know, you'd get to a certain point or you get the end, to the end of the chapter and they'd be like, if you want to go through the front door, turn the page. If you want to go through the back door, go to page 200 and then you could have like 10 different stories depending on which path you decided to take. I always like that sort of thing. So I don't mind getting into a question of like, what would the world look like without Christianity? Um, I think we could all agree it'd be a much darker place really, despite the, the huge misgivings of Christianity in certain areas, the world is a nicer place and that this book highlights that. The author also asked the question without Christianity, where would you get your morality from? And it's a good question because I know a lot of people who didn't grow up Christian. They, um, you know, didn't attend a, a, any sort of Christian denomination school. They didn't go to church. They didn't pray. They didn't say grace. They didn't read the Bible. None of that. And they would still say to you like, well, I know the difference between right and wrong. I know that murder is evil and we should love thy neighbor and all the rest of it. Right. And the answer to that is, yeah, of course, like you did learn all that even though you weren't directly christian but you learnt all that because you grew up in a christian society and i know that would probably upset some people who who don't see themselves as religious um i find it fascinating like i, I um knew a woman a little while ago who had said if her children had grown up and they didn't grow up religious but had her children grown up religious she would have seen that as a failing of her as a mother um and I remember talking to my wife about it afterwards and she was kind of confused. She grew up Christian. She'd be like, why is that a failing? Why would you think you failed as a mother if your kids turn to, turn to God? And I find it fascinating that kind of like on one side of the fence, there's people that think that you're intelligent, well-educated, well-informed, you know, um, understanding of, of science and, and different technologies and things like that. And therefore, you don't believe in God. And on the other hand, you know, you're small minded or close minded, um, less educated, less well informed, less intelligent. And that's why someone would turn to God, I guess, because maybe they've got like a weaker mind. And I find that sort of thing fascinating because there's both of those groups of people, both in a secular society and in a religious society. So it's not one versus the other. It's there's a, there's a good mix of dare I say, intelligent and unintelligent and close-minded and open-minded, both in the secular world and in the religious world. So it's not, it's not sort of a, a case of like blind sheep following a shepherd. Like that, that's, that's 
that's a, a horrible evaluation of, of your fellow man. So I find the concept interesting. Like, if we didn't practice Christianity, if Christianity wasn't in Australia, where would we get our right and wrong from? And if you're not getting your right and wrong, good versus evil from God, you're, you're kind of making it up yourself right and that's a pretty scary thought because i mean humans are pretty flawed so if we're the ones determining what's right and what's wrong i mean that's a that's a pretty dark world the second half of this book is interesting because he goes through and interviews a lot of um prominent australian politicians and he does say it was it was surprising to me because he does say that political uh leaders or, or people in politics in general are more likely than the average person to be religious. And yet they're more likely to be reported by the media as being non-religious, which I guess is relatively true because there was a few people, I mean, here in Australia, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, we know he's a, a quite a devout Catholic, current Prime Minister Scott Morrison, I think he's a Pentecostal or evangelical. He's some denomination of Christian. Um, but other than that, I'd be hard pressed to, to tell you, you know, who else would identify with being Christian and, you know, admit to praying and worshipping God and all the rest of it. But he interviews a good sort of 15 or so politicians on both sides of the fence. Um, and that was also surprising because generally you sort of think conservatives would be more Christian. Sure, that kind of goes, that conservative route, the traditional route. Um, and then people on progressive side would be less religious. But there was equal number of, of both of them um, that were interviewed and and quite firmly claimed that they believe in God and and they pray often and seek his guidance and things like that. Where it fell short for me in that aspect is while that was interesting and it was eye-opening because I hadn't thought of that before and as I said I, I would have thought I guess from the media reporting that the average political member um was left less religious than you know the average person. But I would have liked to see, when he's interviewing people about their faith, I would have liked to see, you know, a couple lay people in there, just average Joes who either maybe they grew up in a Christian family and turned away from it when they were younger, which often happens. Um, and then when they're sort of a bit older, they, they come back to it and tell that story. Or people that were never raised Christian or Catholic or what have you, um, who somehow later, through whatever set of circumstances turn to the church and and turn to God. I think that would have been a really interesting story. There's a review on Goodreads, which I don't know word for word, but it said something along the lines of, it's not a bad book, been done better elsewhere. And I guess having read this, I can sort of see that. All in all, not a bad book. I did enjoy it. Um, I, you know, I don't find it hard to believe that it's been done better elsewhere though. So I will keep my eye out for something like that. But like I said, Pretty interesting, thought-provoking, opened my eyes to a few things that I didn't know before. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, check it out. God is good for you. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Just another book review. I like doing them. So if you like them, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. As always, stay safe.